This week on Elkara Ham Radio, we take the crossband repeaters, a tower, and some folks out to Macquarie County for a rehearsal of what it's going to take to be able to run the race with proper communications. And we are going to climb a mountain to see if we can get a better place for one of the crossband repeaters. Heck, you never know. We might be able to go from two crossband repeaters down to one. That's what's coming up this week on Elkara Ham Radio. So we're back in Macquarie County. We've got about eight or nine people to help us today. This is what we're calling a rehearsal where we're going to be setting up our equipment similar to how we would set it up for the race. But we need a good uh, number of people because we need to set up crossband repeaters plus net control, which is the clerk of the course area. And you can see we've got masts, drive-on masts. We've got the tower itself. We've got a hitch mount for that uh, mast that you see there, that fiberglass mast. We've got Comet GP3 antennas. Thanks to Comet for giving us a good discount on some antennas there for this race because we needed several. Here's KY4 CKP riding up a, he made it, and he's got that uh, wonderful truck of his that can pretty much go wherever he wants to go, that is for sure. Now we're going to start unloading the truck here, and this tower is pretty nifty. Uh, uh, KO4 OSS, Josh there, uh, that you see in your frame, he found this at a property he was doing some work for, and the person wasn't using it anymore. It is extremely lightweight. This is perfect for our purposes for the race. This gets us up a little bit because we did move from last year's location for net control to here on the farm. So uh, this uh, gets us up another 35, 40 feet and uh, uh, gets an antenna up where we should be able to hit it from just about anywhere we need to, where we already have position crossband repeaters in the past. We've got some holes that we're lining up and then we're going to attach some pins there to make sure that everything goes together nicely. And again, what's really nice about this antenna is how light it is. So there we go. We've got a few sections together, or at least a couple of sections together, and we're working on the other end here to get uh, second to last section, I guess. It narrows down on the top two sections. And then Don has gone in and color-coded these so that uh, we know which legs go into which bottom legs there, if you will. Now, this antenna tower is so light, even though it's got the bracing that you see there, that crisscross bracing, it's, uh, it's not really made for anybody to climb on. And that's why you can see somebody had already devised, or maybe it even came with, the actual tilt-down part because you can... One person can can uh, walk this up or walk it down very easily. And, of course, with uh, the gentleman that we have, this is not going to be a problem. And then we have one more. Now, uh, again, a reason to do this is rehearsal. This tower is relatively new to us, so we want to make sure that as we practice putting it together, we have an idea of how much time it takes. We might need to be able to put this up in the field fairly quickly, and based on uh, putting this up and down a couple of times now, we're looking at about 10 minutes. Uh, could it be quicker? It could be. But being safe and everything, eh, roughly 10 minutes to put this up. And then we still have to stake it out. And uh, we'll show that here in just a moment. Plus, we still have to put a mast and an antenna on it up on the top end. And we're going to use another Comet product. Thank you, Comet. Uh, this is a GP1. Now, we are probably going to switch this GP1 out for a GP3, but part of our thinking is we'll use this antenna during the rehearsal, and if everything works out with this antenna, it'll definitely work potentially a, a little bit better with a GP3. So Don's putting on some hose clamps there for the mast, and then Josh is getting the radials loose here so he can put those radials on the mast itself. Those radials give us a good projection of our signal once it's up in the air. Something for that RF to bounce off of, so to speak. Don continues to tighten the hose clamps for the mast. 
There we go. Now you can see the antenna on the mast. And we may do a slightly longer mast for race day. Every little bit of height helps, given some of the far-flung areas of McCreary County that the race is being held on. So we got three people working on it and uh, uh, one person overseeing. That's pretty common. But again, we're learning. Every time we go out and do this, we're learning how we're going to configure this. Now Dawn is going to use a little bit of black tape to make sure that the uh, coax connected to the antenna isn't waving around in the breeze. It is affixed to the tower. Now we're going to walk that antenna up. We've got our orange lines to guide it out once we do get it up. But you can see Josh can lift that easily. It's not heavy at all. And uh, just walk it right up. It's extremely lightweight, but this gets us up about 35, 40 feet. Look how easy that is. Roughly. Wonderfully easy. And then there's a bolt on this end that will go through the leg and uh, a little U-join, if you will. And that gets our antenna up there pretty well. And keep in mind. This was a, a tower that uh, Josh just found on a property. Sometimes the silent keys, estate sales, or just doing maintenance at somebody's old farm, you can find some of these old hot towers just lying around. We got very lucky. Josh did, I should say. Here's Don with his two half hitches to the stake to make sure that the tower is more or less stable. And for our purposes today, no wind or just maybe a hint of wind. So these guy lines will be more than sufficient. Here's Josh finishing up one more stake. Everything got out. Then we had to go back to the truck and talk about where everybody was going to go. We sent some folks to zone two. We sent some folks to zone three. Zone one, we feel really comfortable with. But here's something that I want to show everybody. The crossband repeater locations that we used last year, and they worked out reasonably well. It's that far northern section is very difficult to reach where we had been setting up the CBRs. And you got to keep in mind, we were keeping the CBRs near roadways, so it would be easier for a member to set them up. KO4OSS is ever the one to maybe push the envelope a little bit. He's in really good shape. He works hard for his living. And he said, let's climb one of these mountains and see if we can actually get a better location for one of the crossband repeaters. Now, going in, we thought, we climb this mountain, we'll definitely get a better location for at least one of the crossband repeaters. But as we'll see in just a few minutes, we had such a great location, we can actually consolidate two crossband repeaters to one. And ideally, that's what we wanted to do from the, uh, from the beginning, but wasn't really possible because of time constraints and again yeah, if you look at how hard this is to climb or relatively hard to climb not too many of our members are going to want to take this on for going and placing a crossband repeater so this is something we're going to have to do the day before and we may actually have to find a similar location for zone two but you can see we're not quite going straight up but it's a good uh two or three hundred yard trek up this mountain. And of course, many of us are huffing and puffing a little bit going up this mountain. Of course, Josh is way ahead. He's our jackrabbit. He actually had the case with the crossband repeater, and now he's taking the poles up. And uh, Mike here, KD6FTR, has got one of the antennas, one of the Comet GP3s. Again, thank you to Comet. And I'm just trying to film, uh, you know, walking behind Mike here, going up this trail. And it's just a little game trail, and it might also be a trail that handles a little bit of water runoff. This time of year, not a whole lot of poison ivy or anything, but you can bet you it'll probably be right. there next year. Oh, you're recording me? Yeah. I'll cut that part out. Yeah. Wouldn't be the first time one of us fell on the you're trail. Oh. Down he goes. Go just around to the left of those trees. Josh has said that he might come back and clean this up a little bit. But again, this is, you know, we'll call it spring. You can see there's a little bit of vegetation coming back, but not a whole lot. So it's relatively easy to get up there. But 
come come race day, which will be in late April, it's probably going to be quite a bit more. Well, I don't, I don't want to say hazardous, but it'll be a little bit more of a challenge. Of course, you got it. There are ticks to contend with as well up here. Those of you watching the video and you don't have to contend with ticks, uh, they're everywhere out here in the Daniel Boone National Forest. So I'm running this all the way. I didn't splice this up very much because I wanted to give you a really good feel for this mountain climb, if you will. The roadway gets us pretty close to the top, but then again, we've got about 300 yards that we had to do on our own. But we're all in really good spirits, and it's just a lot of fun. But we were saying, hey, we need to get a chairlift installed or an escalator with the, with the music. But a chairlift would be nice. Look at the view we're already starting to see here. And here in a minute, I'll do a panorama of this south by southwest exposure. Oh, yeah. The first time we could tell there had been a fire up here at some point in the past, but it's been a while. And then the borer beetles have really eaten into some of the pine trees that were I can already very, very dry. Second time up, I'm not nearly as windy. Take a look at that sky we can now see ahead of us. We're almost there. Another 40 yards. And again, ideally, this is what we wanted to do the first year, but look at that view. This is south by southwest that points towards the start of the stage. And as we'll see in a minute, we can also look over the other side of the ridge, and the antenna can pick up signals from the north by northeast part of the stage. Almost there, and here's a little clearing, and we're going to we're going to clean this up a little bit more. Not a whole lot because this is not our land, but uh, uh, but uh, just some of the dead trees and so forth. And take a look at this. We're so high up on this ridge now; we can see on either so side. This is facing north by northeast. North by northeast, and that will get us to the finish the of the stage. Was west by southwest. So with one cross band repeater, we can actually hit both the start and the and the beginning. So we set things up. We got the antenna up in the air using one of our drive-on masts. And sure enough, when we did our testing, of course, we had to go down the mountain, we were able to hit this cross-band repeater from both the start and the finish. And this is the ideal situation for us. It's just taken us three years to want to take this part on because, again, this is not easy to get up on this ridge. But it is ideal for this stage. It won't work for the other two stages, but it'll work for this stage or stages, uh, stages seven through 10, if I'm not mistaken. And once we were done with our testing, it was time to tear everything down. So we all made it back down off the mountain and uh, Don's knocked out the pen. And here's Josh again, just walking it down. And again, it's not a heavy tower at all. Josh makes this, he's gonna be very careful with it, but Josh is just, you know, keeping it very steady, but it's not heavy. Again, we're just so thankful to have this tower. So to kind of wrap up a little bit, we actually made a lot of progress on this day and we called it unlocking the stage because the idea was to have one crossband repeater per, per zone. And it, we just weren't finding an easy way to do that in the first couple of years because once again, we were trying to keep keeping the crossband repeaters close to the road where any of our members could go set them up. This hike up the mountain is going to require some extra effort, and we may actually find another little mountain ridge for zone number two, and that means we'll have to set up on Friday with some able-bodied people. But ideally, yeah, that's what we want, is to be able to set this up on, set one of these up per stage. It's just been difficult, and it's been a learning process for us, this being our third year. Getting this tower is another addition to our uh, setup this year that we didn't have in years prior. We've eliminated a repeater for centralizing comms back to net control. So that, that repeater is no longer needed. And so each year we've gotten a little bit better 
at what we need to run the race for communications. And our race organizers, of course, appreciate all of it because without the communications, they can't race at all. So we were really happy about today. We still have a problem over in zone two where crossband repeater number four goes and we've had opportunities to be able to communicate, but since we've moved net control, we can't quite hit it from crossband repeater number four, which means we're thinking we're gonna have to go find yet another ridge and maybe have to do a little billy goat mountain climbing. These types of projects are a lot of fun, get a lot of your members involved. And again, it's to inspire clubs to look for these kinds of races, walks, runs that you can provide communications. And if you can do it year over year, you're going to get better at it year over year. And you're going to come up with better ideas for how to attempt and work that event. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP Brian. Don't forget, we do have a Patreon now. If you want to give us a few bucks each month just to help our club out for projects like this, uh, those crossband repeaters were not cheap. And, uh, of course, we do uh, things to raise money, but we could certainly use some help. And uh, if you want to help us out, take a look in the description below for our link for the Patreon page. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And 73, and we'll see you in the next video.